The Shape Builder is a long-awaited vector feature that finally made its debut in Affinity Designer 2.0. It allows you to easily add and subtract shapes to create complex designs. In this video, we'll dive into this tool and check out all its capabilities, so let's get started. What's up guys, it's Trent, and in this video we'll be talking about the Shape Builder tool in Affinity Designer, which is this button over here. Now there's two operations you can do with this tool. You can add and subtract shapes together. So let's start with the add operation. I think it's easiest to just show an example. Here in my document, I have this kind of cat silhouette and it's just some triangles for ears and some ellipses for the head and the body. But let's say I wanna combine this all into one shape. Well, I can select these. And the old way of doing this was to click maybe like the Boolean add operation or do some type of other division if I was subtracting. But what we can do now is with the shape tool, I'll select it and I click the plus button up here. And what you can do after you do that is click and drag and you can start selecting these sub shapes and adding components together. So this is showing your candidate shapes to be added. And then when I let up the mouse button, they're added into one overall shape. Now let me undo that. What I could have done is just combine some of them. So for example, if I just want to combine the ears and the head, I could do that also. So you're free to choose what level of detail you want here. Now, if you find yourself doing this and nothing is happening, what I found is that by default, this plus button, these buttons aren't selected. So when you select it and you let up, nothing happens, in which case you have to manually press the plus button here. That's just another way of doing it. Which way you want to do it depends on kind of your design and what's, what's easiest for you. But I often like to just have plus selected already and then click and drag through. Now the opposite operation of add is of course subtract. So let's look at that. Here I have this shape, kind of like a Pac-Man type shape and I'll select my design here. So what I can do is I can go to my shape builder. Now I wanna be in delete mode. So I'm gonna click on the minus button and then as I drag, now you can see there's this red X near my cursor and I'm actually cutting out parts of the shape. So when I let go, you can see part of it has disappeared there. So that's a really useful way of cutting out shapes from something else. Let's say I had this block here and maybe I want to cut a heart out of it or, or something like that. Let's make it blue just so it shows up. I could select both of these and with my shape builder with the minus selected, it just cuts out like that. There are different ways of selecting the objects that you want to work with in the shape builder tool. Let's look at this cloud design. So I've selected all of them. Now so far I've been using the freehand method. So let's see what happens when I do that here. I kind of select all these little tiny shapes. And you can see it's really easy to like miss things. So let me undo this. Another method is to just do marquee. So if I just select everything, I can drag around it and it'll automatically get everything. So that's much easier. Another method is the line method, but it might not work how you expect it. So with the line, it's only gonna merge things that the line is actually touching. So this could be useful if you wanna draw a straight line through something. But for this cloud, I probably wouldn't use it as an example, but it is there if, it's, if that's something you think would be useful for your design. One thing I wanna mention is the concept of wireframe mode, because this can help you understand a little bit what is actually happening when you do the merge tool. So wireframe mode can be accessed through view, view mode, and then you have these wireframe options here. So I'll do x-ray, but this allows you to really see like what's going to be the possibilities when you do the shape builder tool. So if I select these and I do the shape builder, you can see how it's actually selecting what areas are candidates for being selected and merged or deleted. Now control Y toggles wireframe mode. I just wanted to show you where it is in the menu because I find things easier to remember when I see them in the menu. But there's kind of this shaded wireframe mode and then there's the other one which is um, I guess outline mode. So you see just kind of the lines that make up everything. But this can be useful when you have like a complex set of overlapping shapes because by default this, you know we kind of can guess this is a triangle and this is probably some type of rectangle behind it but we don't know for sure. I mean it could be they could have pieces missing behind them. But if we do control Y you can see exactly what it is and of course it works on the text too. Okay, let's look at an example here of kind of using the Shape Builder tool to build up a real world logo. Now, I'm using the Batman symbol here just for demonstration purposes. You obviously shouldn't copy Batman and put it on t-shirts and stuff like that, but I'm just doing it for a demo here. Now, I'll say that this is a pretty common use case I find for myself where you have a low res JPEG or PNG or some type of even pencil sketch that was scanned in 
and you're gonna use the Shape Builder tool to trace it in. So I find that I'm often using the Shape Builder tool as kind of like a tracing tool for something that already exists. Also, you can use it in combination with the Pen tool, and that's what I'm gonna show in this example here. So let's get started. I have this background here, and what I'll do is I'll kind of like define the main shape of my object here. So what I like to do is put some like really contrasting color and dial down the opacity. So like this, and let's get it in the area here. Now what I'll also say is that usually for like a symmetric object like this, I'll just worry about really getting one half of it correctly, and then I'll just cut it in half and mirror it later on. So you kind of save yourself half the work. Some of these curves, they're kind of hard to do with basic shapes. Like this isn't quite an ellipse. It's a little bit teardrop shape, but not exactly. So what I'll do is I'll use the pen tool to actually draw a shape right around this area that I can cut out. Now I could have used the pen tool for the whole thing, but sometimes I don't really like big complex pen tool shapes. I like to kind of break it down a little bit. So let's do that. And what I'll do is I'll even make it like a different color here. So let's try to get this part going. Let me turn this off. So the pen tool is a little tricky, um, but it's a useful skill to kind of practice a little bit. And I think that kind of gets it there. Maybe this could be a little bit tweaked, this handle. We'll call that there. It seems kind of like it basically gets the job done. And actually what I should have done is I should have closed this. So let me close it. And you can just close it any way you want. And I'll fill it in so you can see what it looks like. So you can see this is the shape we did. And what we can do now is I can select my ellipse and this shape that I cut out. And I'll use my shape builder with the subtraction mode. And I'll just cut that out. It looks like I missed a piece at the end, but you can always just kind of tweak it like that. So you can see that's one way we can cut a shape out of a bigger shape. Let me do the same thing for the bottom parts. Now you don't have to fill it in, I'm just filling it in so you can see it, but it would, it would still work the same way anyway. So let's do the shape builder again and we're subtracting. Yeah, so we cut that out. And let's cut out this other shape over here. Kind of a good rule of thumb is that when you drag the handles for the pen tool, it's useful if they're tangent to the point you're drawing as it lies on the curve. So you can see these these uh, handles here are basically tangential to that. And we'll do that there. This time I won't fill it in just to show you that it still works. So over here I might just use basic shapes. So for example we have a circle that will allow us to get this head part here. And we can cut out these pointy ears here. So let's do this. And I want to subtract. First I'll subtract, then I'll add. So subtract, then I'll add. All right, so now we just need to cut it in half and mirror it. So I have it selected. Let's select the knife tool for that. I'll just click here, drag up. So we have these two parts. Let me hide that. Mirror it, snap them together. And I can use the Boolean add or I can use my uh, Shape Builder tool. I guess it's Shape Builder lesson, so I should use that, right? So there we go. So let's make ours kind of a different color. So there we go. I feel this, this top part's a little bit sharp, so I can touch that up a little bit. Maybe we can do more of a rounded corner there. And you can always tweak these things a little bit based on the points if you want to get them absolutely correct. Uh, you could drag these points out like that. Just make sure they're symmetrical. And that's one method you could do to convert a logo to vector. Again, I find myself using the Shape Builder tool usually to trace something that already exists, like someone's sketch or like a JPEG or something like that. So that's my most common use case for it. So that's the Shape Builder tool. It makes our lives much easier than using the old Boolean operations of kind of just adding things and subtracting, which was kind of a little bit cumbersome. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.